Thanks very much, uh, Joan. I just want to say thank you very much for the invitation, Michael, um, to give a bit of a snapshot of what Church of Christ in Queensland is doing, but also want to acknowledge the welcome right from Neville at the front door, just where everybody's made me feel welcome, and I really do appreciate that. Um, that. My local church is um, Whitehall uh, Church of Christ in Ipswich, and um, unfortunately my wife, she's, well, fortunately for them, I guess, she's leading worship today. <laughs> she's got a better uh, voice than myself, so she sends her apologies. But um, um, we really do appreciate the invitation. And just a little bit about myself quickly. Um, I've, um, I was saying to other people, I used to um, be into um, retail business, actually used to own a um, family company, RT Edwards, electrical retailing for many years, I'm a chartered accountant by background, and we sold that quite a few years ago now, and it's given me the opportunity to do where God's just given me some most amazing challenges in the last couple of years from some mission work overseas. I've also worked um, with TAFE and some of the um, hospital authorities and things like that, so I had quite a variety. I was on the board of Church of Christ for about eight years, and in September last year, they asked me to be a CEO. So I'm a bit of a newbie in it. This is, this, this is the part of the job I love. Uh, the, the Monday to Friday, but the Sunday's getting out of the church. I'm still very much linked into with Whitehall, but I'm trying to make sure I'm least there once or twice a month. But um, thanks again for the invitation. So um, as I said, you'll probably I get a bit enthusiastic about it. So if I go on too long, Michael, just cut me off and I'll stop. But the, the thing... Um, um, what I wanted to do was, you know, just to acknowledge that where Church of Christ in Queensland is today, and I'll, I'll talk more, very much about that as the organisation, is very much, I acknowledge, built on the shoulders of those who went before. There's been some amazing men and women who have built up some of the things that Church of Christ is. And we'll often go to some of the other churches, and I know that um, many people here know the um, bit about Church of Christ, but just a little bit of that history, and this is what drew me to Church of Christ, you know, who is Church of Christ? Our identity and existence and purpose as an organisation is founded on Jesus Christ as revealed in the Scriptures. We are not a denomination, but call ourselves a movement, never static. All our churches have that independent authority. Church of Christ in Queensland commenced in 1882, and part of the restoration movement that came out of the USA in the 1800s. And believers from various denominations came together with the goal of attempting to reproduce the essence of the church as the New Testament. And I was just saying the other day um, to some of our new staff there, you know, Church Cross in Queensland started by a 29-year-old who came up from Tasmania and started, I think he started at Zilmia and just walking around um, and he unfortunately died after three years of typhoid at Warwick. But there's many of the churches he set up today, Rosevale and that, <coughs> still in existence. I thought, mm -hmm. as a young man, what a great basis he did to start us off. We have no written creed, no written statement of faith, no creed but Christ. Where the Bible speaks, um, we speak, I'm oh, sorry, where the Bible speaks, we speak where the Bible is silent, we are silent in all things grace and liberty in essentials unity, in opinions liberty, in all things love. And, and I guess I'm talking very much from the organisation point of view, look very much at Matthew 22, 37, that love people, love God, and that strong missional heartbeat. And what I um, said to Michael, um, just to give a bit of a, from an organisation point of view, um, seeing I've only been there for 12, 18 months, we had a bit of a review where we're going, what our strategy is for the next five years, which I thought I'd share with you. Our mission is to bring the light of Christ into communities. And we put that as a, as a vision to be widely recognised as a growing Christ-centred collaborative faith movement leading in building supportive integrated communities, developing innovative holistic care services, empowering people to live hopeful, meaningful lives. And what we've said as, as an organisation, we want to be known for um, well, four values, but three that I want to talk about. Unconditional love, we accept and reach out to people whatever their circumstances. Mutual trust, we're honest in our interactions with all people with dignity. We want to be an organisation that is continually um, being innovative and to seek to do things the best possible way and to be wise stewardship and to be really accountable for what God's given us, both our, our finances, our um, people and, our, um, and the environment that we work within. And I, I, when I talk to our staff, I try to say that means five things. Everything we do, we want to make sure that you can see there's faith, that we're looking after people's wellbeing, it's a, a place of a home, a community, and what I, what I saw demonstrated here today, it's a place that people feel welcome. And we, we um, did seven new strategies, and the first one, and we never have them listed before, and to me it was like obvious, our first one is build the kingdom of God. And I, and I just digress, uh, at the start of January, I got invited in, we're very large into housing, and the Director General invites us in once a year to look at where we are with our financial ratios and things like that. So I spent the weekend learning all these ratios. So I get every question. He said, oh, there'll be seven people interviewing us. So I got in there, read in, there was about seven um, of the bureaucrats there. He said, the first question he asked me was, he said, 
I see your number one strategy, which I read over the weekend, was build the kingdom of God. Tell me how you build the kingdom of God. I yeah. thought, wow, what an, you know, and, and they weren't Christians. And he just wanted to know about our chaplaincy services, how we put faith into action. And he said, I read all your documents. He said, you don't talk about houses, you talk about homes, where people feel welcome and bring uplift. And, and out of that, I wouldn't say it's out of that meeting solely, but um, the government has um, been generously given us some um, fully funded over at Bribey Island, they've given us $28 million to build another 87 units. So not one dollar from anywhere else but the state government have recognised that and allowed us to put more chaplains in there. Mm -hmm. So, that, that, But it's really right. there as an organisation, that's what we're built on, build the kingdom of God, uh, lead in serving the community, innovate and improve, build our culture, develop our people and manage well. That's our uh, strategies. And the one I thought, you know, there's lots of what we get talking about, but the one I just want to talk about this morning was uh, build the kingdom of God. And, and Michael and those who came to some of our regional meetings would understand what we're really trying to do is we've developed, um, divided the state, um, all the churches into six clusters, and each with a community engagement partner. So these are full-time people. I think the one in this area is Nick Burns. Is it Nick Burns? Yeah. And they look after and to be help encourage the church in whatever way we can. We've got, um, we've got um, um, three men and three women um, market that six from North Queensland to out um, the Downs out there, the Gold Coast, um, this area, and obviously the White Bay. And we want to get it, um, all of our churches, um, well, at least 80%, I think at the moment we've got about 60, 70% um, participating in SALT, we call them strategic action leader to leadership teams where churches, our care facilities, and the local community come and say, how can we help bring the light across to the local community? Um, we're encouraging churches to do the national church life survey, I think um, about 80% of the churches have taken up um, that, even um, Hume Ridge, um, they have a thousand members up there and they ordered a thousand forms to do, and they've completed theirs already, to look at where they are, at, um, do a spiritual survey where their church is going. Um, we're also wanting to help the local churches with their governance, um, anything we do to help um, child save, church save, um, just any benefits that the organisation has from a financial point of view, how can we assist the church. Uh, we want to make sure everything we do we embed chaplaincy, so we've got um, 32 full-time chaplains throughout the organisation with our retirement living, our um, residential aged care and our housing, there to bring the light across. And I can tell you some incredible stories <coughs> of um, the effect those chaplains are having. We want also, um, we set a goal was to enable two new church plants a year, this year. When I look back the last couple of years, we haven't gone backwards as an organisation, um, church-wise. We're probably, um, if you look on average, the We've grown about 7% a year in church attendance, which is pretty good compared to where um, a lot of um, Christian um, other um, denominations are. But we want to plant two new churches a year. So we put some money aside to help. Um, and sort of so far this year, we've got five new churches started, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. We've got at Kenmore um, itself, we, um, I did the opening three weeks ago. Um, we've got a church plant there, and at the opening, they're up to 200 people already of a Sunday, and 50 wow. plus 50 children. Wow. And um, he's saying to me, the pastor and his wife came to me and said, we need more room. Because <laughs> yeah. they're, um, they're at the um, auditorium at the, um, at, uh, um, where our um, head office is there, and they, and they had their first baptism last week and um, soaked the carpet. But that was great. Yeah. So that, but it was great to see that um, um, and it, it's a very strong outreach. It was probably built on a core, but there's been a great outreach to the community. Um, unfortunately, that area was very unchurched community. And they've actually come up and their elders, even though they're not affiliated yet, they want to be affiliated in November, they're actually um, they're praying to, that they can plant a church next year. So they're looking forward to planning. We've got um, a, a church plant at Wynnum. They're up to about 20 people already. They've started this year. Um, Highfields Church has planted a new church at one of our facilities at um, Crow's Nest. Um, they're about 20 people. And um, um, Little Mountain um, up on um, Sunshine Coast. And there's about three or four other churches up North Queensland that are looking actively to plant um, um, planting churches. So what we ask, we provide a little bit of seed money to get the church started and, and it tapers off, but it's, the idea is to, um, that an established church helps that governance, that just that accountability for the first year or two as, as churches um, find their feet. So that's um, one of our other goals this year. But I thought I'd just um, talk a little bit, um, and I guess because I'm an accountant, I always talk a little bit of statistics. So if, you, if you're not into statistics, just turn off for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> but, um, but, and just a little bit of, um, I, I, I know that um, you're an established church, but just for those that may not know the whole history, just how we operate, the churches meet together annually to elect a council, and that council, um, it acts on any theological issues that come up and to support the churches in prayer. I know that there's one council member that 
stays in contact with Michael. And it, and its other job is to point the skill space forward. And, and it's run by um, um, Christians, um, committed Christians, Church Across people um, who run the day-to-day -day operations. And so, um, and under that there's um, various teams. So we have our church and engagement team. Um, it's led by Tim McManam. And as I said, there's six um, regional areas. We have at the moment 65 churches. But we're going through an interesting time. Um, normally about three or four churches change leadership each year. In the last 12 months, 18 churches have changed, mm -hmm. which is which is something. But but it's been incredibly um, challenging. But it's, I think God has really bring a renewal because the the pastor at um, uh, Hume Ridge, Dale White, he was there for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. He's about to um, be announced going to another church. The pastor from my church at White, who was there about 25 years, mm -hmm. and I inducted him about four weeks ago into Westside. So there's been a real renewal where um, Jim there retired, um, but some of our smaller churches, Gatton, a young 32-year-old, uh, him and his wife, have taken over the Gatton church off Barry up there. So there's, there's been a real um, Dolby. A lot of the churches are... Uh, um, um, and we had a, uh, a young couple from t uh, Melbourne who moved up to take over the um, Townsville church. Uh, Nick, uh, him and his two young, him and his wife and two young kids move up to Townsville. So God's been very gracious that we've been able to um, fill a lot of those. Um, and I think all the churches are showing some really good growth as we um, move into that. Also, as an organisation, we're very strong to youth in interns. We support them. Um, my local church, Whitehead, we've got about probably four or five um, young people. They're at the moment in. Um, I don't know how you say it, Bang, Bangdao, I think, in, in Indonesia doing an immersion for two or three weeks. But um, they are young people that, um, um, a lot of them are at uni and take a gap year at no pay, donate their time to the church, and at that time we help through ACON with study. And um, so Springwood, Sunnybank, quite a few of the um, churches have um, doing that. It's really helped us um, as um, Whitehill. Our, we have an evening service and it virtually disappeared to nothing. And um, these young interns have got it going. We now we probably have about 150 of young people for Sunday night, which just in the last couple of years has really come back. As an organisation, we've um, run a lot of um, camps for young people, L10, Fuse camps, and out of them, we're getting many people committed, making commitments um, to God each year. So um, as a church, please um, we want to get to support them. ACOM, Australian College of Ministry, which I'm sure you all know about. I think it's about 175 Queenslanders um, in our church is studying at the moment to some will go into full-time ministry but a lot just want to immerse themselves in some study and just so they can you know, maybe lead home groups or, or some things in the church they go from all different levels so if you ever want information on that I'm sure Mike will be able to help you um, Steve Parker from Springwood Church is the go-to on that Global Mission Partners it's doing some great work throughout um, uh, particularly in Vanuatu and I did a, a trip with them to um, my wife and I to Zimbabwe, um, it was incredible. Um, but so if you're ever interested in, in mission work, um, um, Vicky Ma Marnie from our Toowoomba North Church, um, she's available any time to come to speak to you if she hasn't already. But as an organisation, we're a large, diverse, not-for-profit, so in my Monday to Friday, I have 3,950 full-time staff that I work with and 1,200 volunteers. And um, we, we create, um, we strive to create a caring, exclusive environment that meets clients' needs without discrimination or prejudice. Everyone's welcome to call in our help. We operate over 300 different um, service points throughout Queensland. And just a couple of them, um, retirement living. We have 23 retirement villages throughout Queensland. In this area, we obviously have Bribey Island, uh, Century uh, Park at Nambour Church there. And they're probably the ones closest to your area here. So um, at any time we have probably about 1200 residents there. We also into community care where we go into people's home, um, help with maintenance, anything that you, you obviously know <coughs> as it was um, with ageing um, um, residents. Um, so we look after about 10,000 clients and about 600 in the Caboolture, Bribe Island area that we look after. It, it was actually put to the government now, um, one of our um, care workers said, why don't we offer spiritual um, um, support. So the government actually, if you can elect as an aged person to elect, um, we can, um, one of our chaplains will come in, um, the government pays to conduct communion or any, um, if you want prayer time or things like that. So that's one that um, we put forward now. It's been really taken, I think we've got about 30, 40 clients have taken that up straight away um, throughout. So our chaplains, that's part of their role in visiting um, aged people in there who are still in their own home. We're also into residential aged care. We're um, probably um, um, about the third largest in Queensland, so we operate um, 31 of those. Um, the ones like, like 
here is a little mountain which we just opened in February. It's 96 beds. The one at Bribey Island is about 110 beds. Uh, Moona Park at Mitchelton and also at Wurrum on um, Bribey Island. So we're building new ones at any point in time. We've just built a new one at Stanthorpe, Warwick. Um, Boona is um, um, right beside the church. There has been under construction. It's, uh, it was one of our original ones. It's getting rebuilt. And um, we're also building a, um, the one that's um, associated with uh, Southport Church of Christ at um, Lady Smallhaven is getting a complete rebuild. We're also in child, youth and family, so we look after 25% of the foster children in Queensland. So one in four children. So any, any night, we've got 4,200 children under our care. So we, uh, we look at young people right throughout Queensland. We've um, just won a contract um, in North Queensland, so we look up, even look, look after children in Doomagee, Arakoon, Mornington Island, right to the tip, but right throughout the breadth of Queensland. Um, we're particularly strong in South East Queensland and um, so we look after early childhood, out of care, family support and transition. So we have 56 sites there. Um, in this particular area here we look after 284 young people <coughs> and um, in this area here we have residentials at Morrow Field, we have foster care at Morton Bay Foster Care, intensive um, foster kinship program, 152 people, 52 young people in that program. We do family supports in, um, services in this area, in the Morton Bay Families Together. That does prevention early um, intervention. We've got about 120 families that we work in there. And we do transitional care. Um, that's probably more on the north coast, um, towards Sunshine Coast, we have young people in residential. Um, we also in, into housing. We're the um, largest faith-based in the um, housing organisation in Queensland. We're the third largest, as is the other two are both um, government-owned. Um, we have, um, in this area, we have, uh, we're at, on the north side, we've got Kalanga, we've got some at Kooliman on um, Bribey Island and Mitchelton, and I think there's a couple other uh, apartments on this, on this area, but we're developing more um, housing um, at the moment at Hillcrest, um, which is near the Logan area, Bribey Island and the Gold Coast. But they are the facilities, but, um, and again, I'm not exactly sure what each church does, but we're very keen to work together with the local churches, and I can only talk about Whitehill, because it's, again, probably like a similar number here. Our church have got very um, close with their foster um, care program in Ipswich area. We give gifts to each of the children each year. We put a, a Christmas party on and invite the foster carers and the children to this church site. And out of that, um, I remember November last year, Darrell was one Sunday night, he was just wrapped. Three of our baptisms that night were from foster children who had joined the youth group because they felt comfortable with the church and had then made a commitment and um, was going on. So that was, mm. you go, it's three, three people who met, the, met God. And um, we also do a bit of work in Ipswich area with our um, housing. And again, we've got a housing, um, a group from church organises a barbecue there. And out of that, a couple came to church and um, they made a commitment and were baptised and they invited the whole of the housing. We had about 80 of the residents come up for their baptism, which was really great that, mm. um, and that couple joined um, our church. Just a couple of things besides that, other things we're involved in. We have a thing called DigiArts that's run by volunteers that we do in central Brisbane a couple of nights a week because homeless people sometimes haven't even got anywhere to charge their mobile phone or if you haven't got um, internet connection you can't do your Centrelinks and that. So we've got a group of people, we've supplied a mobile van and a group of young people go out regularly just um, helping homeless people on technology and things like that. Um, Cairns Church does um, chaplaincy every Friday and Saturday night in the centre of um, Cairns with um, helping people um, who have overindulged and helping them on their way home, but out of that they made some really good um, connections. Another thing that's unique, we have a, a thing called, um, it's a world first, we, it's, um, we raise money because the government has got limited funding, so we raise a thing called a, a uh, social benefit bond where we ask outside people to invest and um, they, we, they, got, they invested $5 million with us and the government gives us children between um, that coming out of foster care into independent living. So we, we train them to, you know, for education, um, that one of the um, KPIs is they don't go to prison, that they become fully independent and integrated into community. So we run it and then based on, if we're successful, and then the government pays us based on an outcome. So that's a different way of where the government's got limited funds that we can help some young people become fully independent in their living. I'll finish on two other things there. We, we also run a thing called uh, Virtual Dementia Tour. It's a, we, we started this program for all our staff so that so many of our residents these days in our residential age group, I think 30% suffer some form of dementia. 
So we got this license from America, and we've now um, on do it. We put all our staff through it, but and I've done it. It's the most because uh, I have some members of my family, um, older members with dementia, and you actually uh, they dress you, they put on all the. You, you, you actually can say which level of dementia, and then they immerse you into this thing, and you fully understand what it's like to have dementia, mm. and, it's, and it really is incredibly you have a complete empathy from light, sound, the way you give instructions. Because I, they they said afterwards, um, the people with dementia can't hear when you say pick up this and and go there. They can't hear after and. And I said no, I didn't hear you say anything after and. And they said and they played it back and they did. And I said well. Didn't hear you say that, um, but it just gave me a whole. So we put all our staff through that, and then we're now um, providing that. If anybody's interested, we're providing for outside um, organisations, and we've got a um, on a lot of contracts showing other um, providers, architects, um, what just to helping our staff to be more empathetic for residents. Also, as an organisation, we run Medical Santo in Vanuatu. Um, it's on Espresso um, Santo, the island there. It's. Um, um, run by volunteers from Queensland, so doctors, anybody. Um, I know Southport Church went over there, helped with, we owned the facilities over there, did some work on the um, buildings over there. Um, I think they saw 1,200 patients in, in May, so it's free medical assistance to anybody in, um, in um, that one of the northern islands in Vanuatu, so um, just nothing we're involved in there. So it's just a very small snapshot of what is an organisation we do. I've got my business card, and I know that you've got some of those networks and at a glance. If everyone know anything more about the organisation, but Caboolture here is an important part of bringing the light of Christ into Queensland. We look forward to working along with Michael and the team here. Um, you know how to assist this church, and I know there's a couple of things we're doing, um, and that's another thing. Just to digress. We have a thing called Community um, Centenary um, CDF. Community, uh, Centenary it's Development Fund. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to get the name there. And yeah. uh, so, if you ever have any surplus money, you can invest that with us. And any profit on that, we give 100% back to the churches. And last year, we were able to give $65,000 in money back to the churches that could play, pay for you know, laptops or shades, cloth, or um, different church. I think 23 churches um, accessed some of that money last year. So, if there's ever anything that you want, there's a um, Michael knows we put something out there. We also assist wherever we can with. Um, um, churches with the payments of their pastors, etc., like that. So we want to do whatever we can to support you here at um, Kabulcha. <coughs> and also, I know it's a lot of the other facts and figures there, but to, you're an independent church, but you're part of a large organisation that's doing some really good stuff in Queensland, bring the light across. And uh, and I'm just fortunate that I can see some of the, the commitments and what are some people are making their um, faith commitment with Christ. And I can just leave it a, a verse that's really stuck with me this year because as an organisation, um, you know, you know, you're trying to um, give that Christ guidance that and a verse that sticks with me is, is um, Micah 6 8 and it says, What does the Lord require of you? To do what is right, to love mercy and work humbly with your God. So thanks very much for your time today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.